We all aspire to live longer years, and the prevailing idea until recently has been that my chronological age will decide how many years I have left to live, but today, we know that not everyone ages in the same way. The calendars I've carried on my back seldom equate to the age my body truly is. So if today I've blown out 50 or 60 candles on my cake, the essential question I must ask myself is, does my body have the same number of years as me? Today, I'm sharing with you the best tools to measure your true biological age. These indicators are known as biological clocks and they tell me how fast I'm aging each day, thus bringing me closer to knowing what my real life expectancy is and are really useful because monitoring them is the only way to know for sure if a change in my lifestyle is having a positive effect on my longevity or not. Imagine you decide to undertake an 18-6 intermittent fasting regimen to increase the number of your stem cells because you've read that it can help you live longer and you want to know if you're truly making your body younger. The advantage here is that some of these biological clocks are easy to measure with a simple blood test. And indeed, you might already know some of them if you've had a blood test recently. The first tool for measuring my biological age is the length of telomeres which are DNA structures that protect the ends of chromosomes and can be analyzed with a simple blood sample. Telomeres are used to measure aging because every time a cell divides, something that happens continuously in your body, it loses DNA and relies on these structures to replenish it. However, telomeres are not infinite and they shorten with each division until they become too short and the cell can either die or worse, enter a state called cellular senescence or zombie cell. That is, a cell that loses all its functions but doesn't die and stays there, releasing harmful molecules and bothering its neighbors. Short telomeres imply aging and disease, and ultimately, a shorter life expectancy. But age is not the only culprit in my telomere shortening. Chronic stress, unhealthy habits such as smoking or drinking, refined carbohydrates and saturated fats, sedentary lifestyle or even environmental pollution also play a role. And we know that the recommendations we make on this channel such as interval exercise, some supplements and a plant-based diet have shown to slow down this shortening of our telomeres, giving us more years of life. And now, getting ambitious, the question that arises here is, do I have to settle for slowing down my aging, or can I regain my youth by lengthening my telomeres again? You should know this is not fantasy, because it is not something unheard of in nature. We know there are species of jellyfish that are capable of regenerating completely time and again, rightly called immortal jellyfish. For example, Aurelia aurita or moon jellyfish. But can humans aspire to something like this? The fact is that there exists an enzyme called telomerase whose function is precisely this. It lengthens telomeres, and you won't be surprised to know that it has been called the enzyme of eternal youth. But the problem here is that this enzyme is not found in all our cells. We find it in exceptions like embryos or stem cells. And since I cannot become an embryo again, my strategy must involve increasing the number of stem cells that on one hand help me repair my cellular damage, since they have the potential to become any other type of cell, but also because increasing my number of stem cells means having more telomerase, and this translates to more years of life. It may sound like science fiction, but this scenario is not so far off. A laboratory study discovered that increasing telomerase could add up to a 41% bonus in in years of life. Of course, in humans, results can vary, and we still don't have literature on telomere lengthening in our species. But the good news is that these studies are already underway. The second tool for measuring my biological age is probably the most accessible of all, as they are two very common values in routine blood tests, glycated hemoglobin and CRP. Glycated hemoglobin is the percentage of hemoglobin in blood that is bound to glucose, and it has recently been seen to be a powerful marker for predicting how many years I have left to live. Not least because diabetes type 2, known to be associated with age, is diagnosed when glycated hemoglobin reaches 6.5%. And as for CRP, calm down. I'm not referring to the PCR we're tired of hearing about, but to C-reactive protein, a common value in a blood test that measures inflammation throughout my body, and we know that more inflammation tends to lead to more diseases, which will lead me to have a shorter life expectancy. In fact, there is a term widely used in scientific literature which is inflammaging, that is aging through inflammation. Third, we have the Horvath clock, probably the most accurate biological age meter we have, as it is an almost exact way to know our biological age, thanks to measuring marks on my DNA, called methylation, which tell us very precisely the age my body really is. Moreover, 
unlike other biological clocks, we see that the Horvath clock does not forgive and starts ticking from the moment we are born. But it's not all about measuring. Can we take advantage of the Horvath clock to live longer? The great news here is that we have already demonstrated in several studies that we can reverse this aging process, this methylation of our DNA with some drugs like metformin, and measures such as the interval exercise we have already talked about on this channel. Now we see methylation as a target for the prevention and treatment of aging, because everyone can measure their methylation with a blood sample, with several laboratories already doing it at increasingly competitive prices, which could allow me to perform it periodically if my goal is to keep checking if I'm really doing the right things in terms of being genetically younger. Fourthly, we have the zombie clock. I named it this way because it measures our cellular senescence or number of zombie cells, which are the most difficult to quantify because we need a tissue sample to be able to see them, but ways to measure them indirectly with a simple blood test are being explored. Remember, the only function of these cells is to annoy their neighbors by secreting inflammatory molecules so we can take advantage of this and detect these traces they leave in our bloodstream, like interleukin-6. The question that arises here is, is there any advantage for the body to generate zombie cells? How is it possible that evolution hasn't developed a way to prevent us from continuing to generate this type of cells that make us sick and age us? It turns out that cellular senescence is a strategy our body has to prevent the emergence of tumors, because when my cells suffer significant DNA damage, they are more likely to become cancerous, so nature puts them into senescence, asleep, so they cannot divide uncontrollably. Fifthly, we have the immunological clock. As we age, our amount of defensive cells, especially T lymphocytes, decreases, making my immune system less effective not only in fighting infections, but also less adept at identifying and eliminating cancer cells and also fat accumulations inside my blood vessels. But why does this happen? The main culprit is the thymus, a rather unknown organ located at the top of the chest, between the sternum and the trachea. And it turns out that the thymus is the most important organ in the development and maturation of T lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are formed in the bone marrow and travel to the thymus, which is kind of like a school for lymphocytes. And there they learn to recognize and eliminate harmful agents until once they have finished their education and are useful for our defense, they are distributed and patrol our entire body. The thymus is an organ that has always been surrounded by a mysterious aura as it grows during childhood until puberty and then begins to silently decrease, a process called thymic involution in which it gradually turns into fat, losing its functions and making our body more prone to disease. So why are these biological clocks so important? Because it's the only way we have today to measure our longevity. Unfortunately, we do not have a way to know if a change in us humans adds years of life without doing a follow-up of the 80, 100 years that people live nowadays. You would need to conduct a clinical trial of 100 years duration and have several Several generations of scientists take over the study as researchers retire or pass away. Therefore, the big secret to deciding to make a change in my lifestyle is to know in which of these clocks an improvement in life expectancy has been demonstrated. The better I will be at living longer, but no healthy measure has been measured in all the clocks. For example, a plant-based diet has been shown to improve my methylation, give me longer telomeres, improve my glycated hemoglobin or insulin sensitivity and my inflammation, but its impact on the rest of the clocks has not yet been studied. And the same happens with interval exercise or HIIT. So we know we are going to have a very high probability that these two measures will significantly prolong my survival. And thank you very much for staying with me until the end. What do you think of these biological age measures? Did you know any others? 